My name is uh, Rodrigo Vega. I'm a senior lecturer in biology and Canterbury Christchurch University. I'm a biologist and also a molecular ecologist. And I've been working in this area for the last seven years as, as a lecturer. And I do research in molecular ecology with basically trying to use molecular tools brought from other disciplines and using those tools to answer questions in ecology. I'm a, I'm a scientist that falls within the classification of an investigator scientist and a teaching scientist. So I spent really most of my time teaching and a smaller percentage of my time doing research. As a lecturer, I'm a module lead in various modules from foundation year, that's an entry level uh, qualification, to university, also level four, which is the first year, five and six, which is the final year of the undergraduate degree, but I'm also a lecturer at the master's level. Uh, for a few years, I was also program director for a master's course in ecology. And if I'm not giving lectures or seminars or doing tutorials, then you will find me carrying out my research, which is, which is in uh, molecular ecology. As a lecturer, something that happens is that we also end up doing a lot of admin work. So there's a lot of marking to do, making sure that all the, all the marks have been assessed properly and the students are getting a fair mark for what they've done, keeping track of your personal academic duties, uh, making sure that our students are happy and doing well, and obviously we had to set up exams and, and then mark all those set of exams and make sure that they have been checked, second marked, and all those marks are ready to be entry, entered into the system. I obtained my BSc from the National University of Mexico. This is BSc in biology. But really what kick-started my academic trajectory, I would say, um, was that at some point I decided that I wanted to gain experience in biology and I just went knocking on the door in the, in the Biomedical Research Institute at the National University of Mexico. And I said that I wanted to volunteer. They were happy with that, so they took me on board. And I, there I started to learn some of the techniques they were using in the lab. So they were looking at some parasitosis and how we could um, fight this parasitosis. It was an important one in Mexico, it's called cysticercosis. And I started to get involved in biomedical research uh, as a volunteer. And after, a, I think it was a year, and the supervisors there, they said, well, do you want to do your, your final project with us? We have a project looking at population genetics of the parasite. So I was very happy to do it. And the selling point was that I could spend one month in France all paid because I could go there to learn some techniques. So I always said, yes, it was an opportunity for me to travel abroad and be in France, I've never been there. Um, so I said, yeah, sure. I got started and a few years later, that, that's the way it is in Mexico. It, it takes a long time to finish the career. So a couple of years later, I completed my BSc. So I decided to pursue a master's in ecology at the Institute of Ecology, also in the National University of Mexico. And, and I did a project with, an, with a Roland it's an island endemic and the island uh, in Cozumel Island, a Caribbean island, which meant that I had to do field work in that place. So I, I did extensive field work on the site, collecting specimens and uh, tissue samples so I could do my population genetic analysis and phylogeographical analysis, basically looking at the genetic diversity of this endemic rodent. I was able to use similar techniques that 
than the ones that I have obtained when I was doing my, my undergraduate project. So it fitted very well. The question in this case was more ecological or conservation focused, um, but I enjoyed it very much and I decided that I wanted to, to be um, a molecular ecologist. So I obtained a scholarship so the, the Mexican government uh, was able to fund me at the time. So I found this scholarship to go and work at the University of York. My supervisor was, uh, was happy to have me there, having come with a, with a scholarship. And I have a, a project that was already designed for me, so looking at the phylogeography of the pygmy shrew. So in this case, I had moved away from the rodents. Now I was working with an insectivore in Europe, which ended up being a nice evolutionary study with some ecological focus um, using, again, molecular ecology techniques. And the thing is, I was in New York for the first two years of my degree, normally it's four years, but two years into my degree, my supervisor and his wife decided they wanted to move to another university, they wanted to go to the United States, um, so my supervisor's wife moved there first to Cornell University and I followed. I was based at the entomology department for a couple of years. Uh, I continued with my typical PhD project on the shrews, but just working in a different department until my supervisor joined us at Cornell University. So I completed my PhD and then I started a position as a lab technician. That was a short position, a temporary position, uh, working on, on bees, honeybees, so a completely different area. But got me a little bit of, of money to, to continue living uh, in that place. Later on, I found a position as lab manager in the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology with my ex-supervisor from the PhD, so who has now started his position at Cornell. And while working there and setting up the new lab, I started to look for postdoctoral research projects. So I wanted to contribute something back to Mexico and I developed a project in collaboration with the Institute of Ecology and a conservation institute from the state of Morelos in central Mexico and Cornell University. So in this case, I, as a postdoctoral researcher, I traveled to Mexico several times collecting sample, in this case using new techniques, using high throughput sequencing, uh, for genotyping and endemic rodents. So again, back to the rodents. This was an endemic rodent from central Mexico. So uh, molecular ecology is basically a discipline that tries to answer general questions in ecology, but using molecular tools. Basically, these are techniques and um, concepts taken from other disciplines, but incorporated in the ecologist toolkit to answer questions, for example, on the diversity, the distribution of individuals, why we have so many species in some places and fewer species in other places, how individuals are related and how they interact with each other. Uh, we do this using molecular tools, so as, a, as molecular ecologists, we have to extract DNA, interrogate that information, that genetic information, to see the relationship of individuals. And obviously, all this research can be used for conservation biology. It can be used in an area called conservation genetics for the management of populations by monitoring I'm also interested in, in a new technique that's called environmental DNA, which we try to obtain DNA, that's genomic information from the organisms on a site, but not directly from the individuals. 
that carry those cells with that genetic information that we try to take that from the environment directly from you know maybe a pint of water from from a pond or a river or from directly from soils that means we are always busy doing something if we're lucky and if we have time we, we apply for grants then we can also write publications which is very important for for our career to advance our careers what i expect is that if you stay in an academic position for long enough you can grow within your university as an academic so the typical path of an academic would be to start as a lecturer and senior lecturer then if you have publications and grants you can continue to become a reader or a principal lecturer if you're more interested in the pedagogical aspect of, of your work and finally become a professor that, that the, the the highest level in terms of the the, the academic um, pathway and other people like, prefer to follow the managerial aspects of the job so becoming head of the section of head of school or maybe dean that that area um, so it's also up to the to the person what they, they like to to do if they, do they like to lead a group of academics or would you rather be supervising students for research and so that's how the the academic trajectory could end up going at this point i'm, I'm happy as a senior lecturer continuing my research and my teaching responsibilities at christchurch mm -hmm.